Hi guys, it is December 15th and we're here for our Bible and Ear Challenge reading. That's going to be read from Micah 1 through 3, Psalm 143, and Matthew chapter 13. So Micah chapter 1. The Lord gave these messages to Micah of Morsheth during the years when Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah were kings of Judah. The messages concerned both Samaria and Jerusalem. And it came to Micah in the form of visions. Grieve over Samaria and Jerusalem. Attention, let all the people of the world listen. The sovereign Lord has made accusations against you. The Lord speaks from his holy temple. Look, the Lord is coming. He leaves his throne in heaven and comes to earth walking on the high places. They melt beneath his feet and flow into the valleys. Like wax in a fire, like water pouring down a hill. And why is this happening? Because of the sins and rebellion of Israel and Judah. Who is to blame for Israel's rebellion? Samaria is, cap is capital city. Where is the center of idolatry in Judah? In Jerusalem, its capital. So why the Lord will make the city of Samaria a heap of rubble. Her streets will be plowed up for planting vineyards. I will roll the stones of her walls down into the valley below, exposing all her foundations. All her carved images will be smashed to pieces. All her sacred treasures will be burned up. These things were bought with the money earned by her prostitution, and they will now be carried away to pay prostitutes elsewhere. Because of all this, I will mourn and lament. I will walk around naked and barefoot in sorrow and shame. I will, I will howl like a jackal and wail like an ostrich. For my people's wound is far too deep to heal. It has reached into Judah, even to the gates of Jerusalem. Don't tell our enemies in the city of Gath. Don't weep at all. You people in Beth Lepra, roll in the dust to show your anguish and despair. You people of Shafir, go as captives into exile, naked and ashamed. The people of Zanin dare not come outside their walls. The people of Bethazel mourn because the very foundations of their city have been swept away. The people of Merith anxiously await for relief, but only bitterness awaits them as the Lord's judgment reaches even to the gates of Jerusalem. Quick, use your swiftest chariots and flee, you people of Lachish. You were the first city in Judah to follow Israel in the sin of idol worship, and so you led Jerusalem into sin. Send a farewell gift to Morasheth Gath. There is no hope of saving it. The town of Aksib has deceived the kings of Israel for a promise, to, a promise help it could not give. You people of Marisha, I will bring a conqueror to capture your town, and the leaders of Israel will go to Adullam. Weep, you people of Judah. Shade your heads in sorrow, for the children you love will be snatched away, and you will never see them again. <coughs> Make yourselves as bald as an eagle, for your little ones will be exiled to distant lands. Chapter 2, Judgment Against Wealthy Oppressors. How terrible it will be for you who lie awake at night, thinking up evil plans. You rise at dawn and hurry to carry out any of the wicked schemes you have power to accomplish. When you want a certain piece of land, you find a way to seize it. When you want someone's house, you take it by fraud and violence. No one's family or inheritance is safe with you around. But this is what the Lord says. I will reward your evil with evil. You won't be able to escape. After I am through with you, none of you will ever walk proudly in the streets. In that day, your enemies will make fun of you by singing this song of despair about your experience. We are finished, completely ruined. God has confiscated our land, taking it from us. He has given our fields to those who betrayed us. Others will set your boundaries then, and the Lord's people will have no say in how the land is divided. True and false prophets. Don't say such things, the people say. Never prophecy like this. Such disasters will never come our way. Should you talk that way, O family of Israel? Will the Lord have patience with such behavior? If you would do what is right, you would find my words to be good. Yet to this very hour, my people rise against me. You steal the shirts right off the backs of those who trusted you, making them as ragged as men who have just come home from battle. You have evicted women from their homes and stripped their children of all their God-given rights. Up, be gone. There's no longer This is no longer your land and home, for you filled it with sin and ruined it completely. Suppose a prophet full of lies were to say to you, I'll preach to you the joys of wine and drink. That's just the kind of prophet you would like. Hope for restoration. Someday, O Israel, I will gather the few of you who are left. I will bring you together again like sheep in a fold, like a flock in its pasture. Yes, your land will again be filled with noisy crowds. Your leader will break out and lead you out of exile. He will bring you through the gates of your cities of captivity back to your own land. Your king will lead you. The Lord himself will guide you. Chapter 3, Judgment Against Israel's Leaders. Listen, you leaders of Israel. You are supposed to know right from wrong. For you are the very ones who hate good and love evil. 
You, you skin my people alive and tear the flesh off their bones. You eat my people's flesh, cut away their skin and break their bones. You chop them up like meat for the cooking pot. Then you beg the Lord for help in times of trouble. Do you really expect him to listen? After all the evil you have done, he won't even look at you. This is what the Lord says to you, false prophets. You are leading my people astray. You promise peace for those who give you food, but you declare war on anyone who refuses to pay you. Now the night will close around you, cutting off all your visions. Darkness will cover you, making it impossible for you to predict the future. The sun will set for you prophets, and your day will come to an end. Then you seers will cover your faces in shame, and, your, and you diviners will be disgraced. And you will admit that your messages were not from God. But as for me, I am filled with the power and the spirit of the Lord. I am filled with justice and might, fearlessly pointing out Israel's sin and rebellion. Listen to me, you leaders of Israel. You hate justice, justice and twist all that is right. You are building Jerusalem on a foundation of murder and corruption. You rulers govern for the bribes you get. You priests teach God's law only for a price. You prophets won't prophesy unless you are paid. Yet all of you claim they are depending on the Lord. No harm can come to us, you say, for the Lord is here among us. So because of you, Mount Zion will be plowed like an open field. Jerusalem will be reduced to rubble. A great forest will grow on the hilltop where the temple now stands. And Psalm 143. A praise of a right, Psalm of David. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my plea. Answer me because you are faithful and righteous. Don't bring your servant to trial. Compared to you, no one is perfect. My enemy has chased me. He has knocked me to the ground. He forces me to live in darkness like those in the grave. I am losing all hope. I am paralyzed with fear. I remember the days of old. I ponder all your great works. I think about what you have done. I reach out for you. I thirst for you as parched land thirsts for rain. Come quickly, Lord, and answer me, for my depression deepens. Don't turn away from me, or I will die. Let me hear of your unfailing love to me in the morning, for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk, for I have come to you in prayer. Save me from my enemies, Lord. I run to you to hide. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on a firm footing. For the glory of your name, O Lord, save me. In your righteousness, bring me out of this distress. In your unfeeling love, cut off all my enemies and destroy all my foes, for I am your servant. <clears throat> okay, and then Matthew chapter 13. Story of the farmer scattering seed. Later that same day, Jesus left the house and went down to the shore, where an immense crowd soon gathered. He got to a boat where he sat and taught as the people listened on the shore. He told many stories such as this one. A farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The plants sprang up quickly, but they soon wilted beneath the hot sun and died because the roots had no nourishment in the shallow soil. Other seeds fell among thorns that shot up and choked out the tender blades. But some seeds fell on fertile soil and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand. His disciples came and asked him, Why do you always tell stories when you talk to the people? Then he explained to them, You have been permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others have not. To those who are open to my teaching, more understanding will be given, and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But to those who are not listening, even what they have will be taken away from them. This is why I tell these stories, because people see what I do, but they don't really see. They hear what I say, but they don't really hear, and they don't understand. This fulfills the prophecy of, of Isaiah, which says, You will hear my words, but you will not understand. You will see what I do, but you will not perceive its meaning. For the hearts of these people are hardened, and their ears cannot hear, and they have closed their eyes. So their eyes cannot see, and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand. And they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. I assure you, many prophets and godly people have longed to see and hear what you have seen and heard, but they could not. Now here is the explanation of the story I told about the farmer sowing grain. The seed that fell on the hard path represents those who, who hear the good news about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches the seed away from their hearts. The rocky soil represents those who hear the message and receive it with joy, but like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go very deep. At first they get along fine, but it, they wilt as soon as they have problems or are persecuted because they believe the word. The thorny ground represents those who hear and accept the good news, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares of this life and the lure of wealth, so no crop is produced. The good soil represents the hearts of those who truly accept God's message and produce a huge harvest, 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. Story of the Wheat and Weeds 
Here's another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night, as everyone slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. The farmer's servants came and told him, Sir, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. An enemy has done it, the farmer exclaimed. Shall he pull out the weeds? they asked. He replied, No, you will hurt the wheat if you do. Let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds and burn them, and to put the wheat in the barn. Illustration of the mustard seed. Here's another illustration Jesus used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants and grows into a tree where birds can come and find shelter in its branches. Illustration of the yeast. Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast used by a woman making bread. Even though she used a large amount of flour, the yeast permeated every part of the dough. Jesus always used stories and illustrations like these when speaking to the crowds. In fact, he never spoke to them without using such parables. This fulfilled the prophecy that said, I will speak to you in parables. I will explain mysteries hidden since the creation of the world. The wheat and weeds explain. Then, leaving the crowds outside, Jesus went into the house. His disciples said, Please explain the story of the weeds in the field. All right, he said, I, the son of man, am the farmer who plants the good seed. The field is the world, and the good seed represents the, the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. The enemy who planted the weeds among the wheat is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the harvesters are the angels. Just as the weeds are separated out and burned, so it will be at the end of the world. I, the Son of Man, will send my angels, and they will remove from my kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And they will throw them into the furnace and burn them. <clears throat> there, will be, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the godly will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand. Illustration of the Hidden Treasure The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field and to get the treasure, too. Illustration of the Pearl Merchant Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Illustration of the Fishing Net Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that is thrown into the water and gathers fish of every kind. When the net is full, they drag it up onto the shore, sit down, and sort the good fish into crates, and throw the bad ones away. That is the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked people from the godly, throwing the wicked into the fire. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you understand? Yes, they said, we do. Then he added, Every teacher of religious law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like a person who brings out the storehouse, the new teachings, as well as the old. Jesus rejected at Nazareth. When Jesus had finished telling these stories, he left that part of the country. He returned to Nazareth, his hometown. When he taught there in the synagogue, everyone was astonished and said, Where does he get his wisdom and his miracles? He's just a carpenter's son, and we know Mary, his mother, and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. All his sisters live right here among us. What makes him so great? And they were deeply offended and refused to believe him, refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, A prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his own family. And so he did only a few miracles there because of their unbelief. That is all for today. We will see you next time.